Well, Jim, let's uh, stay on the topic of the WWE Hall of Fame. Quite frankly, in my eyes, much more ridiculous than Thunderbolt Patterson. Liam Ivea has been announced as being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> legendary female promoter. And of course, she's legendary because she was The Rock's grandmother. Mm. Liam Ivea, WWE Hall of Fame. Am I wrong to say this is ridiculous? Am I wrong to say this is exactly the kind of self-serving baggery we don't want from Dwayne Johnson? Or are people going to be like, how could you say that? She was a trailblazer. She was a woman promoter in a male's world. Are they going to give me all that? Or are they going to acknowledge it's ridiculous inducting her into a wrestling hall of fame as a wrestling promoter? Well, yes, you are correct in, in short version, because if you wanted a successful female wrestling promoter, Christine Jarrett it was the most successful ever, but I'm not advocating for her to be inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame either. She would probably be mortified to be associated with the whole company. Um, and to be quite honest, I think even Ann Gunkel probably was more successful because Leah Maivia had the promotion that her husband had bought when the the island wasn't doing that well to begin with and oversaw the last couple of years of pro wrestling in Hawaii until it went out of business. And uh, did it not? Am I, not, I mean, isn't that, how long did she run? She took over when Peter Maivia died. When did he die? 82, 83, 83? 82. Yes. Yeah, somewhere one of the there. Other. Again, it wasn't a big money territory. There were a lot of scandals with Lars Anderson and Leah and extortion plots, all sorts of bribery. craziness, but it wasn't like a thriving wrestling company i mean correct me if i'm wrong people like going to hawaii if they were going back and forth to japan yeah. or they can get a vacation but it wasn't a territory it wasn't ed francis's hawaii no and well and we laughed on the young rock episode where they had the big stadium you know show and they oh she sold out or whatever they had that big stadium show hot summer night in whatever the fuck right aloha stadium and, and Crockett sent guys, Flair went, because of who she was, because of who she'd been married to, she wasn't the Rock's, you know, uh, grandmother at that point, because nobody knew who the fuck he was, and Rocky Johnson eh, had some cachet in the industry, but also everybody liked going to Hawaii, and I assume they still lost their ass on that show because it didn't do that well. And by what, by the, the whole Polynesian pro wrestling by 87 was, was done, right? And, and maybe she in got 88, I got to remember. Was maybe. it 88? She got deported also, uh, which they uh, cliffhanged on Young Rock when we were still watching it. I don't know how that got resolved, but this was neither a thriving territory nor a successful promotion. And she ran it by virtue of her husband dying. I'm not, so I'm not, I've never met the lady, not trying to slander her, but as a Hall of Fame wrestling promoter, male, female, or indifferent, I, it, it's just, it's awful coinkadinkle that The Rock gets 30 million bucks and, and named to the board of directors, but his daughter becomes the general manager of NXT and his grandmother is indicted into the WWE Hall of Fame for a job that she had and you know by inheritance for 5 years or so and i mean it, it it does look a little suspicious doesn't it i guess the problem is now rock's going to give a speech or someone will give a speech changing history Leah Maivia, I'm not saying she shouldn't be in the grandmother's hall of fame or something like that but unless the Wrestling Hall of Fame, the idea of it is put anyone who is in the wrestling business in the Hall of Fame, there is no legitimate Wrestling Hall of Fame that would have Leah Maivia in it as a promoter. Even if she was a woman promoter in an era before all those women promoters we have today. Well, it, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm with you. And even as we mentioned with Thunderbolt, it came out of the blue because he had never, you know, worked a day in the WWE. But even if now, if you take the tack that they're putting in people 
from the entire wrestling business since they've conquered it. Okay, Thunderbolt still came out of the blue and probably wouldn't have come up had it <laughs> had it not been for they've got a certain quota of of slots they need to fill in their nominations. But uh, you can't say they couldn't come up with one of their female talents from the last twenty years that they have not put in. They have to the woman slot filled uh, or slot filler or whatever has to be the rock's grandmother that i mean because thunderbolt at least was incredibly over for periods of time in the uh, in his hottest territories and was a star in the wrestling business at what he did whereas uh, leah maivia was not an accomplished promoter again male or female just you know she got it because it was it was the, it was already on the way downhill when Maivia bought in, right? It was on the way downhill after Ed Francis got out the first time. Remember, they tried to yeah. get things going again in the 70s, him and James Blears, and it just didn't connect the same way. If you talk to anyone who grew up in Hawaii in the 60s, they know who all those wrestlers are. Not so much for the next generation, you know, guys like Don Morocco coming up or whoever it may be. Siva Afi. That's right. <laughs> but anyway, well, but congratulations to to Leave My Via. Who? It, it, well, uh, let's go back and see. Is is she the only member of the WWE Hall of Fame that's been deported and had a, a federal indictment for extortion or whatever that charge was? Strong arm tactics. Uh, Shinma's here, so maybe him. Uh, no, I can't. Uh... I don't know. Some of the names here that they've inducted as legacy inductees, I forgot some of these. They're interesting. Brickhouse Brown is in the Hall of Fame. The fuck? Okay. Baron Michelle. The legacy class in 2020. Quick. Wait a minute. And by the way, Ivan Koloff is still not in the WWF Hall of Fame, right? I believe he is not. Let me see if they've inducted him. They've stopped doing the legacy uh, inductions after 2021. He never got a, a legitimate induction. Ivan Koloff. One of the great workers of all time, a major star for 20 years, and a former WWWF champion, not in the Hall of Fame, but Thunderbolt Patterson, Lee Maivia. Are in, I, I, like, la like the last legacy class in 2021, the legacy class was Dick the Bruiser, Pistol Pez Watley, Buzz Sawyer, Ethel Johnson, and Paul Bosch. I liked Pez too, but that just stands out. The year, and, the year before, hold on. Crippler Ray Stevens, Brickhouse Brown, Dr. Death Steve Williams, Baron Michelle Leone, and Gary Hart. Boy, that's all over the page too, isn't it? Uh, all right. The, the, year, yeah. the year before that, Bruiser Brody, Wahoo McDaniel, Luna Vachon, S.D. Jones, Professor Toru Tanaka, God. Primo Carnera, Joseph Cohen. Wait, what? I don't know who Joseph Cohen is because he's the only one here not hyperlinked. But Joseph Cohen, Hisashi Shinma, Buddy Rose, and Jim Barnett. Okay, well, we don't know who Cohen is. And uh, I mean, Shinma was probably a political favor of some kind for the, with the Japanese. And again, for S.D. Jones, bless him, bless his little pee picking heart, but it's Wahoo McDaniel, it's Ray Stevens, it's these names, Tanaka. And then so, and it's, it, it, you know, it, it, and, and I don't know what the fuck's going on with, uh, who were the last two? The last two that year were Buddy Rose and Jim Barnett. Oh, and Jim Barnett just got snuck in out of nowhere again to... Uh, and real quick, Jim, the year before that, Stan Stasiak, Lord Alfred Hayes, Dara Singh, Cora Combs, El Santo, Jim Londis, Rufus R. Freight Train Jones, Sputnik Monroe, Boris Malenko, and Hiro Matsuda. That's all over the fucking page. I mean, I think if you told Rufus R. Jones that he would be inducted into the Hall of Fame with Jim Londis and El Santo, he wouldn't have believed it. I, I, I agree with you. He also wouldn't have known who they were. But yes, I agree with that, too. Uh, 
Well, congratulations to all of our inductees. For this gets more bizarre and more bizarre as the years go by. You know, if I had to put money down, and we could talk about it afterwards, if I had to put money down and guess who's going to be in the Hall of Fame at some point soon, I'd be willing to put money down if you would say no. I know it sounds crazy, and this may be completely crazy. Within the next three years, they're going to put Dixie Carter in the Hall of Fame. Oh, come on! I really think so. Would you take that bet? I'll tell well, how much? Well, we could discuss the money later. Well, would you, would you take that you bet? Blanket no, it's about, you have to have the guts. Go for it. Just go for it. That's what I'm, I'm saying. I'll, I'll take that bet. You're going to regret because Dixie ain't going in that Hall of Fame, but I want to know how much you want to bet for. Or are we giving this to charity or doing something good for someone? No, I don't, I don't believe in that. I believe you should give the charity what you want to give them, but whatever you win, you should keep. Well, that's what I believe then we, in. Then we'll discuss the amount of money, but Dixie Carter in the Hall of Fame in three years is what you're, what you're saying. I'm saying yes. They're going to need a woman executive. They're going to run out of women executives. They're going to have a cozy relationship with TNA. They've apparently already run out of black wrestlers. It, certainly Ernie Ladd's. Yeah, he's been in long ago. Oh, since, no, he, the, 90s, oh, since the 90s. Since like 95, yeah. Why, why didn't Sailor Art Thomas get any love and respect? He was a huge fucking draw. Hold on. I think he may be in. Uh, let me double check. I thought he was in. Uh, oh, yeah, he is in. He went in with the Legacy Class of 2016. Okay. Mildred Burke, Frank Gotch, George Hackenschmidt, <laughs> Ed Strangler Lewis, Pat O'Connor, Lou Thez, Lou Thez, and Sailor Art Thomas. Gotch, Hackenschmidt, Lewis, Thez, and Sailor Art Thomas. God damn. Oh, I would did Sailor Art Thomas know he I, I saw him with a hammerlock and a, the obviously the full Nelson and the bear hug. There was three holes. I'm not sure him. Maybe and the headlock. There's four. The way they go all over the place and just pick big names and mix them in with other names, you could argue, but from other generations. Listen to the next class, and we'll end with this. Farmer Burns, June Byers, Haystacks Calhoun, <laughs> the Barefoot Contessa Judy Grable, Dr. Jerry Graham, Luther Lindsay, Toots Mont, Ricky Dozan, and Bearcat <laughs> Wright. Jesus Christ, what a collection. That is all over the spectrum of everything. Uh, and and by the way, why again does Bearcat write? We've we've tried to drum this. I still see on Twitter people showing clips of Ron Simmons as the first widely recognized African American world champion. Why does Bearcat write still continue to get overlooked by these young historians? I don't think the historians overlook him, but I think, unfortunately... The young historians. I think, unfortunately, it's less about Bearcat right in that case. It's more about the WWA being overlooked. People don't consider it a major world championship anymore because it's been gone for so long, but it was. You look at any magazine in the 60s, it was one of the major belts. Yeah. Before Bruiser stole the name and, and the rest of the company disappeared into the NWA. That's right. All righty, where are we going from here? Where were, what I was trying to uh, set you up for w with what I thought was an even... I can't even speak. What I was trying to set you up for, what I thought was going to be an easy layup, was the transition to DraftKings from... Oh! How much would you bet on Dixie Carter going into the Hall of Fame? Oh, and we got off on a whole nother thing, didn't we? We did, but I will still take that bet. I just won't talk about how much we'll uh, make it about. Well, see, we're not allowed to fucking tell people how to bet. So now we don't bet, ladies and gentlemen, on whether Dixie Carter goes in the Hall of Fame or not, because we you have heard stuff from us. But if you have a completely open mind about these things, not that we're going to sway you in any way, but I understand that the college basketball tournament is about to come up. It's about to happen. See, I don't watch it anymore since Louisville went to fucking shit. They just fired Kenny Payne, the coach, that 12 and 52 over two seasons. I think that's the worst two years that the goddamn University of Louisville basketball team has ever had. So he's out the door. 
He didn't last as long as the last coach did that was out the door. Patino got scandal ridden and fucking left town under cover of darkness. So now the once mighty University of Louisville Cardinals, well, they're the shits, folks. So don't bet on them to win the NCAA tournament. But if you want to bet on the NCAA tournament in general and all the college basketball fun, frivolity, and festivities that are coming up, then we got you. All you got to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook. You do that and use the code JCE, which is most important, and you can bet $5 and get $150 instantly in the bonus bets. So already, I'm not telling you how to bet. I'm just telling you don't bet on the University of Louisville because they announced it. Did you hear about the announcement, Brian, at the most recent home game? No, I have no idea. They announced over the loudspeaker, they said, would the woman who dropped her five kids off at the Yum Center please pick them up? They're beating the Cardinals 54 to 30. So anyway, folks, if you want to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code JCE and put $5 down on this madcap crazy thing they call the college basketball tournament, you're going to get $150 instantly in bonus bets, and that is only at DraftKings because they are actually not only one of America's top-rated, top-rated, they are one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, and they're all over the March mania. So anyway, $5, you get $150 with the code JCE. Are you ready to hear, Brian, what you need to do if you need help and for more information? Oh, I could use some help right about now. Yes, what do I need to do? Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia. Why would you be? Visit www.1800gambler.net or call Stephen P. New, but his number is separate. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. If you can't bet fast enough, they'll send you some help to bet for you. You can call 888-789-7777. God damn it, sounds like a slot machine. No wonder these people think they've won something. Or visit CCP. <laughs> I can't fucking read that. Dot org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. Kansas, the people of the wayward wind. Or the the heartland, the or whatever it is out there. You're thinking a wayward sun. Southern wind. The people of the southern wind out there in Kansas. That's That was the third album. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours. After issuance, cdkng.com slash bball for eligibility and <laughs> deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. The end. <laughs> <laughs>